Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we are talking summertime jig fishing. Let's go. Jig fishing is one of those techniques that just catches big bass. It's one of the staple techniques in the sport of bass fishing. Everyone should know how to do it. But I was shocked as I became a guide to find how many people have zero confidence in a jig. Jig fishing is big in a lot of people's minds. A lot of guys are afraid to do it. They don't know where to start. They just have no confidence. I would say in the, in the ranking of things that are challenging for an angler or things that are a goal for an angler because they're challenging, above jig fishing, there's probably only two. There's the idea of catching a first frog fish and the idea of catching a first swim bait fish. But those two aside, jig fishing is right up there at the top of, of one of those things where anglers know they need to do it. They've been told they need to do it, but they don't have the confidence. And I know for some guys that sounds crazy. Some guys throw a jig every day. I throw a jig a ton, but for a lot of people, it's big. The good news is summertime is an awesome time to build that jig fishing confidence. And in today's video, I have really narrowed this thing down. We've got uh, just a couple of jigs here for you, and I've got three scenarios where a jig is a major player, where you can go in with confidence and the jig is not only going to work, it's going to help you catch more fish or bigger fish than other techniques would. Now, jig fishing, let's start with just the basics, okay? If you could only have one jig, I've said this for years, and it remains the same. If you could only own one jig, I don't care what lake you fish, I don't care where in the country you live, if there's only one, it's this right here. This is a Dirty Jigs half ounce pitching jig. So it's an Arky style head. Stout hook, but not super heavy wire. Again, half ounce, and the color is called the go-to. It doesn't matter where in the country you are. If you could only have one jig, it's that jig right there. Through the years, if I could only have one trailer, it would be a Reaction Innovations Beaver, probably in Green Pumpkin Red. You take that trailer and that jig, and you can catch fish anywhere. And for some people, you should stop right there. Just take that information and run with it because you can go out with confidence. And if you throw this day in and day out in the right situations, we'll get to what those are. It's going to work. Now, one little trick I do is I like my jig to be nice and compact. I don't like a really long jig. It's just a personal confidence thing. So I take these first three ribs and I cut them off. And then I also take the tails, which are stuck together, and I split them. There's two little nubs in there. Cut those, and now those tails are independent. Take that, throw that on that jig. I've only done this about 10,000 times in my life. and you're set. That will work anywhere. If you wanna get really crazy, you grab one of these too. This is the pack of slim, the four inch. So you have an alternative trailer because this trailer is just profile. It has no action. It just sits on the bottom, but it looks good. There are times where you might want a little more movement Again, I take the top off of that. We're looking for a nice, compact profile. So now you've got one with very little movement and one where those tails will kick on their way down and on their way back out just an option. All in, one bait, two trailers, 
And if you want just one trailer, call it a day. You can catch a jig fish anywhere that bass live with that right there. With that said, we're gonna set that aside, okay? I've got a few other things for the guy who wants to go a little deeper. You wanna learn a little more, you wanna build a little more confidence, and you want to catch more and or bigger fish this summer. A lot of guys stop fishing in summer because of the heat. I mean, it's hot. It's, it's pretty miserable out here today, I'm not gonna lie, especially sitting on a hot deck not actually standing up fishing right now. It's really hot down here on the carpet. Uh, but the heat, the thing that drives people away is the thing that should attract you to this technique. It should draw you to want to throw a jig. There's a reason for that. The hotter it gets, we've talked about this throughout the summer already. The hotter it gets, the peak of the day, forget the morning, forget the nice part of the day, the peak of the day, it's not by mistake we're sitting out here at two o'clock right now. Peak of the day, high sun, highest heat is coming. It's getting miserable, it's baking. We start getting those shadows on the water. I've got shadows up there along the cover. Obviously you've got shadows under docks. Those shadows become critical to the bass. The bass, they're uncomfortable too. If you're miserable, the bass are miserable and those bass will go to shade. Why does that matter? Because the number of places you need to go look for them just got a whole lot smaller. See in the morning when the sun is low, it's cool, that's when fish can be anywhere and you're just going down the bank fishing. That's a difficult time to learn a jig because again, jig fishing, it's a little slower. You're not covering tons of water. And in the morning, you need to be covering water. But high sun, fish pulling to shadows, you know exactly where you need to be fishing. There's no question. And a jig can get in there, you can fish it slow, you can be effective, and you can catch those fish. So I've got three styles of baits here that are going to help you, one, build a lot of confidence, two, catch a lot of fish, and three, if you stick to this, this summer, you will catch a giant. The first one is really heavy cover, okay? We know those fish are looking for shade. Some fisheries have it, some people, some fisheries don't. So this doesn't apply to everybody. But if you've got a lot of grass or you've got overhead cover that hangs out over the water, places that people like to flip and punch or even frog, like on top of the cheese with a frog, those bass get up under that for the shade and it is hot. The bass are in there for the shade up underneath all that cheese and slop and down in the grass, okay? Normally, again, guys are throwing that big Texas rig uh, or they're frogging over the top of that, but the jig is amazing for getting in there and catching those fish. Now, they make true punching jigs like this, okay? And in the video description, I will link that original jig. I'll link all these different baits I'm talking about, the exact trailers, the rods, all that stuff for you. It's all in the description below the video. You just need to figure out how to open it. Depending on how you're watching this, the description might be there. You might need to click more. You might even need to go down and click more again. Might need to click the three little dots. But there is a description below this video with a link to all of these different things for you to make it really easy. So, talking heavy cover. They make true punching jigs. And there's a time and a place for that. But if I can get away with it, I really prefer just a heavy flipping jig. This is the no jack flipping jig. The hook that's in this thing is insane. You could tow a truck with it. It's a giant hook. The benefit, well, there's several benefits of taking a jig and fishing it in that heavy cover. You can do it with a Texas rig, right? A lot of people like to punch heavy cover with a Texas rig. The problem is, once you hook those fish, you've got all that tungsten or lead out in front of their mouth, thrashing, there's no weed guard, and if you fight those fish for too long or you struggle to get them out of the cover, they can come off. This is one of the key places where you can build confidence with a jig this summer. Color-wise, you know, that's up to you. 
whatever color you're, you're already flipping with. I throw a lot of black and blues, like Hematoma is one of my favorites. It's a very subtle black and blue, but I also throw that go-to color a lot. Just two different color profiles, same jig. The idea here, now when I go to that heaviest flipping jig, I can't punch the thickest stuff. That's where the punching jig comes in. But I can sure get this thing to crawl down in a lot of it. If I can get this through, I've got a better profile than I do with a Texas rig. Because the jig with the full skirt and everything is a beautiful profile. And it's big down there on the bottom. It gets bigger bites. Uh, you will get monster bites on the jig if you can get it through the cover. You need to kind of find the limit as you're trying to flip that stuff and use your same super heavy duty punching rod. I use that X-Pride 711 Extra Heavy. It is the baddest flipping stick I've ever used. I've used them for years. That's what I throw these big jigs on just like I'm flipping with an ounce and a half of tungsten. But again, if you can get the jig through, find the limit of what you can get it through and then target those areas. Punch it through that heavy cover. You'll get a lot of bites because the overall profile is perfect compared to a Texas rig. And when you hook them, way more of the fish come in the boat. The benefit is all in the weed guard. When you stick them on a Texas rig, there's nothing to hold that hook in place. When you stick them on a jig, See that weed guard bends to expose that hook when I set the hook. So you stick that fish, that weed guard, it's pushing back, it's pushing up against the roof of the mouth. It's literally holding the hook in place. So you will land the vast majority of the fish that bite. So again, two benefits. One, it looks better. Two, it keeps them hooked better. It's one of the best scenarios if you're a heavy cover guy to go build confidence in a jig and so many people overlook it. Most people just flip a Texas rig out of convenience and they forget that the jig is even an option. The next situation, again, we're talking about heat of the day, bass using shadows, dock fishing, fishing lay downs, any cover where bass can get into that shade. Traditionally, I throw that pitching jig, but there's been something I've been playing with. Now, I do two things actually. I throw the pitching jig. I also throw a finesse jig. Something I've been playing with the last couple of years is setting both of those aside in the summer and picking up this jig right here. This is a compact pitching jig. Let me pull a trailer off to show you. So half ounce pitching jig, the one we just talked about. See that hook in there? See how long it is? Let me set the compact pitching jig. I'm gonna pull this trailer off here and ruin it, but that's okay. I wanna be able to show you. Pitching jig, compact pitching jig. See the size difference? This is a much shorter shank hook. It's a smaller hook, it's a lighter wire hook but it's still that pitching style head. The benefit of a pitching style head is that they do everything. They're not the best in every situation, okay? A flipping style head that we were just talking about, see how it's pointed? That is way better in grass, but this is way better in wood. This is way better in a lot of situations, but it will do all of it. You can throw it in rock, you can throw it in grass, you can throw it in mud, you can do all the things with it, all with that one. That's why I like the pitching jig so much. So this compact pitching jig, again, I just ruined this trailer, but I'm just putting it back on here just to give you the profile. I've got a pack of chunk hanging on that guy. The beauty of this one, and the reason why I've been playing with it, is that you can throw it on a lot lighter line. So the places that I would throw a pitching jig, laid down trees, that's a big one for me. Uh, anywhere where there's cover in the water, not overhead thick grass, not punching, but anything short of that, I throw that pitching jig. Docks, I really like to throw a finesse jig. Well, that compact pitching jig can do both. 
I get the benefits of both styles of jig. So it'll go through anything. I throw it up under that dock. Turns out there's a brush pile under there because a lot of people stick brush under their docks. It'll come right through it, no problem. Uh, because of that lighter hook, I'm able to drop down to a lot lighter line as well. I'm able to throw this on 10 to 12 pound line, which is a huge advantage. Now, if I'm catching giant after giant after giant, I'm gonna go to that pitching jig because I want that stouter hook. But day in and day out, lighter line equals more bites. So try this style jig, compact pitching jig, on lighter line, 10 or 12 pound line, go dock fishing with it. That's where I want you to try this out. Again, we're trying to build confidence today. On your lake, if you've got docks, whether that's marina docks, private docks, you know, little wooden docks sticking out into the lake, boat slips, whatever it might be, bass will get up under those things in the heat of the day. They love to sit in those shadows. If it's big marina docks, the best thing to do is fish the catwalks going back to land, fish that shadow there. If they go out over too deep a water, you don't fish at all, but fish where those catwalks go back. If they're smaller docks, flip it all. Now, not all docks are created equal, and the shadow on a dock is not all equal. What I mean by that is if you're going to take time doing this, the best spot under any dock is the darkest part of the shadow. And the darkest part of the shadow will move throughout the day as that sun moves overhead, right? It might start on one side, and then as the sun goes overhead, it'll shift to the other side. The darkest part of the shadow on a dock is where the biggest bass will sit. They always take the best spot. They're not under there to feed. They're under there to stay out of the sun, so they take the best spot. You're presenting them a really good meal, so they choose to feed. Does that make sense? So again, not all docks are the same. The bigger the dock, the bigger the shadow, the better. And the darkest part of the shadow, the better. Third situation, this one is just about having fun. For the guy that likes to river fish, the guy that likes to pond fish small bodies of water, a lot of guys are throwing a Senko, throwing a shaky head, throwing a jig, don't be afraid to downsize your jig this summer. If you want to build confidence, a little micro jig will go a long ways. Do something with like a ball style head, not a football style head, because there's a lot of grass and junk in the water this time of year. So you want a head that can kind of get through more of that without getting all gooped up all the time. Something like the Nishini or the Missile Baits, and then you're going to put a really small trailer on that. You're either going to put the two that I like the most, this is the Z-Man, the TRD Bugs. And then this is the Pack-A-Chunk, okay? And in the Pack-A-Chunk, I actually like the standard Pack-A-Chunk, not the Tiny. The Tiny is so small, you don't get as much movement out of it. So just like I said, a Beaver versus a Pack-A-Slim, this one's all profile. This one's about movement. Some days they like one, some days they like the other. So you just try both. Here, we're talking about that Z-Man TRD Bugs. I mean, it sure is just a downsized beaver style profile. And then the other one is that small pack of chunk. Let me put that on here so you can get a feel for it. So instead of throwing your typical shaky head, Senko, etc., if you wanna build yourself a little jig confidence, Try a micro jig first. Look at that profile. That thing smashes. Now, the thing about a micro jig, it's not gonna catch a bunch of giants most days, right? It's not a, a big full profile. But, but that drop shot or worm that you were throwing is catching a lot of small ones too. This will catch all those same small ones. But when you come across a big one, I have found that they're more likely to eat the jig, even a little jig, than they are the worm. I don't know why that is, but it stands true in just about everywhere except Florida. I don't know what the deal is with Florida. Those Florida fish love to eat that big worm. They do, man. There's no way around it. But 
anywhere else in the country that you can find a bass, if it's a big one, they seem to hammer that jig more often than they hammer the worm. Even a little downsized profile jig like that. Now, the rods for jig fishing are critical. If you're gonna get, if you're just dabbling, take your medium heavy type rod and just give it a try, okay? But if you're gonna get serious about it, if you like catching jig fish, because this is a major deal in the summertime, it will flat catch them. Having the right rods for the job is everything. I already mentioned when I'm punching heavy cover with the jig, just like the Texas rig, that X Pride 711 Extra Heavy is the baddest flipping stick that I have ever used at any price. And that's a bold statement. Uh, I didn't used to like flipping. I guided on the California Delta. I guided a bunch of fisheries where flipping was critical, clear like it was a major deal. And I would go out of my way to not flip. When I got my hands on this rod, I realized that after all those years, I loved flipping. I didn't like all of the flipping sticks I had been using. They were too heavy. This thing is so feather light for a 7-Eleven extra heavy, it's insane. I have no idea how it can be this light and be this strong. I've never broken one. And I hit fish so hard, I drag them out of the thickest stuff. I mean, we've got video of Tim wrenching an absolute monster out of the crud and dragging it over a mat and the rod is just featherweight. Makes all the difference because when you flip with a jig or a Texas rig, your arm is high most of the day. It's up here, right? All of your technique is up here. That gets tiresome if the rod is heavy. So the lighter the rod, the better. This is an awesome combo. But my all around jig rod, if I could only have one, just like if I could only have that pitching jig, hands down, the Mega Bass Orochi Double X the Brailleist. The Brailleist is an incredible rod and they were out of stock for years. The demand got so high for the Brailleist that you literally couldn't get one. Guys would buy other rods just while they waited for Brailleists to come back in stock, but you can get them now and the Brailleist is incredible. I pair that up to a Metanium and it, it is, a, it's an unbelievable combo. The key with a jig rod is that you don't want a super strong midsection. I want, when I hit those fish, I want this rod to load down into the mid. I wanna fold up that rod because the combination of that weed guard holding that hook in place and then my rod being really bowed up, it's very hard for a fish to throw it. That combination is the deal. If your rod is too, stout it's just a pool cue and only the tip is loaded up when that fish comes up and jumps because in the summertime they like to come up and jump when they do that and they shake that head that little tip will load and unload and when it unloads that's slack line they can throw it so when you've got a rod like the brailleist that will load deep into the midsection of that rod when that fish comes up and tries to jump it'll load and unload but all this is still loaded up and it keeps them pinned. There's never slack. And then for the tiny jigs, I really like this little guy. This is the Zodius, the 610 medium heavy. That medium heavy is unbelievable. That's what I throw my micro jigs, my finesse jigs on throughout the year. All fall and winter, I, I put a ton of time into these baits and all of it is on that one rod. Uh, well, they make it in an X-Pride too. I have one of each. I use both of those rods. But the Zodius is incredibly sensitive, incredibly light, and will save you some money over the X-Pride. Pair that up to a Corrado 70, and it's, it's a rocking combo. So guys, jig fishing, it doesn't need to be scary. You can catch fish on these baits. There's a reason it is one of the staple baits in bass fishing. There's a reason. It catches monsters. It also catches a lot of fish. Uh, you just need to go out on a day and in a situation where the jig will be effective so that you can start building confidence. Once you've caught a few on it, then you're like, nope, give me that jig. It's not big in your mind anymore. It's just a tool in your arsenal. And these situations, 
really heavy cover, dock fishing, or small bodies of water, perfect places, perfect situations on a hot day to build that jig confidence. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.